Hey, welcome to First Alliance Orlando. And whether you're a first time visitor or a regular attendee, we are glad that you are here. If you would like more information about our church, you can visit us online at firstallianceorlando.org. You can also give online at, on our website. And if you'd like to keep up with our weekly events, you can visit us on any of our social media platforms. Today, we're celebrating uh, Palm Sunday, Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So I want to encourage you to, uh, to meet together with us, to worship when, when we're singing, and let's see what God will do for us today. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad you're along with us. Let's worship the Lord together.
Some of us have less hours. Lord, we're not able to leave our homes, many of us. But God, we have seen what you have done. Lord, if you can move a mountain, Lord, you can heal our land. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for what you are doing now in the midst of suffering. Lord, we pray that you bring us together. Lord, that we worship you in one accord. You are awesome. You are holy. Hosanna in the highest. In your holy and most magnificent name. Amen. Well, good morning, First Alliance family. And to everyone who's visiting with us online today, I want to welcome you. I also want to say thank you to our church for your continued faithfulness in the Lord, for the way that you've loved and encouraged one another during this difficult time. I know that there's a lot of people who are feeling alone, feeling isolated, and there's a lot of uncertainty right now. But there is good news for us this morning. As we begin our journey to Easter, we celebrate Palm Sunday today, the coming of our Lord Jesus and his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. There is something significant that God wants to share with us through his word today. And so we're going to begin our time in John chapter 12, or we're going to be reading verses 12 through 16. So would you read with me as the screen, as the scripture comes on the screen? Let's read this together. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. I want us to imagine there's this huge crowd that had gathered for this festival, and they see Jesus coming down the road, and they go out to meet him, and they start shouting, Hosanna, which means save, or please save us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of of the Lord. See, this phrase is significant because it's actually a reference to a prayer by David in Psalm 118 that says this, Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You see, they saw Jesus as the one who would save them. They began waving palm branches, which signified victory over one's enemies. They hoped that Jesus was the promised Messiah that was prophesied in the Old Testament. I want us to think about for a second how high the expectations were of the crowd, how high the energy was. It would be like if the Orlando Magic actually won a championship. Can you imagine how crazy downtown Orlando would be right now? Thousands of people gather. They'd be cheering, waving banners and flags. There'd be a huge parade and we'd be celebrating. We finally won a championship. The energy would be so high. And that's kind of what this moment was like. Because at this moment, prophecies that were hundreds and thousands of years old were being fulfilled in Jesus. As we read in Zechariah 9, 9, it says this, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And also in Jeremiah 23, verses 5 and 6, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and righteous in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, 
the Lord, our righteous Savior. The people of Israel had long awaited for the Messiah that was promised for them. The issue here is that the people saw Jesus as their political Messiah, as the one who would free them from the Roman occupation. But Jesus didn't come to uh, free Israel from Rome. He didn't come to defeat any earthly kingdom. God's plan was so much bigger than that, so much more. He didn't come to bring an earthly kingdom. Jesus came to defeat sin and death itself. He didn't come just for Israel. He came for all nations and for all people. Just think about it. They wanted a king of power, not a king who was humble, a king who would suffer. You see, Jesus would be, eventually he would be exalted. As Philippians 2 says, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. But before there was exaltation, Jesus had to be humbled. There had to be servanthood. And there had to be suffering, suffering on the cross. He had to become obedient to death so that he could defeat death from the inside out. I love this quote by William Penn. It says this, No pain, no palm. No thorns, no throne. No gall, no glory. No cross, no crown. See, the people of Israel had certain expectations about God and the way that they would be saved, how that they would be saved. Uh, but God's plan was so much bigger. I feel that we have we often have certain expectations about God and the way He wants to um, work in our lives. But I have found that my expectations are usually too small, and He wants to do more in my life than I could ever imagine. This morning, I want us to raise our expectations. Where in your own life have your expectations of what Jesus is able to do been too small or too low? See, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3, Now to him who is able to do more than we could ever ask or imagine, to him who has the power to work deeply within us. See, sometimes um, we ask God to do things and we don't receive the answer we want or it doesn't happen in the time that we want it. But it's usually because he wants to do something more than what we are asking. Has there ever been someone in your life that exceeded your expectations? Uh, recently for me, I went to France for a couple weeks. And when I came home, I had, well, number one, I had a really long flight. I was on an airplane for about 15 hours. I was tired. I just, when I got home, I wasn't expecting what happened. When I got home, uh, my friends were waiting for me with ice cream. My amazing fiance had actually finished one of our home projects with a lot of pictures that we wanted to hang on our wall. It was done and it looked so amazing. And she had also bought me rollerblades. I mean, this was not what I was expecting when I got home. And I was overwhelmed with love and joy and appreciation. And I know a lot of times our expectations of people and about God, they're often too low. But God today wants to exceed our expectations. He wants to go deeper. He wants to do more than what we are asking him to do. You see, a lot of us are crying out to God today. A lot of us are crying out, Hosanna, please God, save us. What, a, what is it for you today that you are asking God to save us from, to save you from? Is it the virus? I know all of us have been asking God, have been praying, God, please save the world. Bring healing to those who have been affected by this virus. Is it possibly that you're asking God to, if you've lost your job because of this, or you know someone who's lost their job, that you're asking, how am I going to uh, be sustained through this process? How am I going to support my family? Or possibly you've lost a loved one right now and you're trying to figure out how to cope and how to heal. You see, God wants to bring salvation. He wants to respond and bring us hope in these situations. Or even possibly it's the fear of these things happening that has weighed us down. We haven't necessarily been directly affected by what's going on. 
but there's the fear of loss. There's the fear of what could possibly happen. And this morning, Jesus wants to bring us hope and wants to overcome our fear. You see, God wants to raise our expectations this morning. And so Jesus coming as he did into Jerusalem signifies that salvation has come. It gives us a picture of the hope that is to come. And I just want to identify a couple of reasons why Jesus came and what he has brought to us today. The first thing is that Jesus came not just to save us from these things that we are calling out for him to save us from. Jesus came to defeat the disease of sin that is in our life. You see, sin is what separates us from God. Isaiah 52, 9, or 59, 2 says, But your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you. You see, our sin is what keeps us in having a relationship with the Father. But Jesus came to repair that relationship, to restore us, and to right standing before God. Our sin also keeps us from having healthy relationships with one another. And Jesus says that the greatest commandment is to love God. But the second is just like it, to love your neighbor. He wants us to have love for one another. He wants us to not be um, in conflict and to have hatred for one another, but to have peace with each other. The other thing that our sin does is that it robs us of our peace and our joy. Sin brings fear. It brings shame and guilt into our life. And Jesus wants to release us from that. He wants to release the burden of sin and give us hope and give us peace in our minds and in our hearts so that we can rest and have hope and uh, just assurance in him today. You see, Jesus came to release us from sin and the effects of sin in our lives. He promises us, us a salvation that deals more than just our temporary struggle. Jesus deals with our eternity. And I, I don't want to diminish our current temp, our struggles that we're going through right now or what we're work, uh, currently walking through. But what I'm saying it is that it's time to raise our expectations about what God can do and what he wants to do in our lives. You see, Jesus came to shatter our expectations about what we think of who we think God is and the way that we view ourselves. You see, Jesus came to show us that God is not distant. He is not far from us but that God is pursuing the, us and that he came to us. He left heaven so that we might know him. John chapter 17 verses 3 through 4 says this, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. See, God wants us to know him personally. The other thing that Jesus, the expectation that he shattered, that he changed is that the feeling that we are unloved or that we are unwanted. He wants us to know that you are more loved than you could possibly imagine. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says this, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. You see, Jesus demonstrated his love for us on the cross so that we would know that there is no depth, there is nothing that God would not do to show us how much we are loved and how much we are valued and wanted and desired. He desires relationship with us. The other expectation that Jesus shatters is that we have to make ourselves good enough to be accepted, that we have to perform and that we have to earn our way to God, that we have to achieve you see, in Titus 3, 5, it says this, He saved us not because of the righteous things that we had done, but because of His mercy, because of Jesus' love for us. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior. In 2 Corinthians 3, 5, He says, Not that we are sufficient in ourselves, or to claim anything of ourselves, but our our sufficiency is from God. You see, he, because of Jesus, we are already 
and fully accepted before God. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to make ourselves good enough. The scripture tells us that we, are, that we all fall, fall short of the glory of God, that we are all sinful, that there's nothing we can do to make ourselves right before God. But Jesus comes to say that we don't have to do that. He takes the burden off of us so that we can rest fully in him and know that we belong to him and that we are loved. You see, Jesus raises our expectations of what God is truly after and that he wants us and he wants us for eternity. Now, Good Friday, which is coming up, also reminds us of an interesting twist that is coming that we were not expecting, but that salvation is near. Jesus had to endure the cross first so that salvation could come, so that we would experience life everlasting in him. And so this morning, as we cry out, Hosanna, blessed is the one who will save us. Jesus has come to bring salvation. Now, Hosanna also brings with it not just a positive, but also a negative connotation. The negative is that there is something so bad that we need to be saved from it. But the positive is that salvation and the one who will bring salvation has come and that he is coming. Palm Sunday is the reminder that salvation is on the way. We haven't experienced it fully yet, but it is coming and it is promised to us. There is a, this hopeful sense of expectation around Palm Sunday this morning. It's like someone who is lost at sea and they see a boat in the distance. And while they have not been saved yet, they have hope. They know that they will not be in the sea for much longer. We have that hope and that great expectation that God has brought salvation to us and that we will be saved, not just from our current struggles, but for eternity. See, God's expectations are so much more for all of us this morning. Palm Sunday is a sign that our oppression and captivity are nearly over. And we can experience hopeful joy when we set our eyes on Jesus as the one who has brought salvation by enduring the cross, by being buried and rising again. We now have life and hope in him. I hope for all of us this morning that as we we believe in Jesus. We see him as the one who has come and the one who is walking with us through our current struggle and has promised us salvation, who promises us eternity, eternity that we would raise our expectations this morning. I know a lot of us, uh, we get stuck in our own minds about what God can do and what he wants to do. But I want to encourage you this morning that God is able to do more than what we could ever ask or imagine. And that he wants to do it right now in your life. This is not something distant. This is something for us right now. And so Palm Sunday is a day that we can celebrate and have hope. And as we look to Easter and what Jesus accomplished on the cross through rising again, we know that our security is not in our own selves and not in what this world has to offer. It is in Jesus alone, Jesus our Savior, who has come to save all and so that all might know him. Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you for the way that you have loved us already this morning, for the way that you have demonstrated um, the the desire to meet us where we're at, to meet us in our present struggle, and know that we are not alone, and that we are not on our own. We are not walking through this without you, Lord, that you know where we're at. And Lord, you want to show yourself strong, and you want to bring relief. You want to bring peace. You want to bring joy to us. And you want us to know and get a glimpse of salvation today and you want to give us a bigger glimpse in the God who loves us and wants to change us and transform us more into his image God we thank you and we praise your name and we thank you for the gift of Jesus we thank you for the gift of your son 
that he gave his life for us so that we might have eternity. And that we don't have to do anything to earn it, except believe and trust and follow you. Lord, I hope today that we would all put our hope and trust in you. And that we would not lean on our own strength, but lean heavily on you and the hope that is to come. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we lift your name high. Thank you, Jesus. We pray all these things in your precious holy name. Amen. for joining us this morning. We hope that the Lord spoke to you and that you were blessed by what you heard. just want to invite you that if you'd like more information about our church to visit our website firstalliance.orlando.org and to also follow us on social media. We're going to be posting every day this week different truths that the scripture says about Jesus as we prepare for Easter. I also want to invite you to join us this Friday at 7 p.m. as we are going to be having an online Good Friday service that we are gonna be joined by other Alliance churches in the Orlando area. And then we will also be having an Easter celebration service this Sunday at 10 a.m. online. I hope that you will join us. 
and I hope that you have a blessed week.